Australia's coastline is home to more than 350 lighthouses and today I'm going to show you 15 of some of the beautiful towers here sorted by state as follows. Let's get started. The name Cape Byron was given by Captain James Cook in honour of James Byron, a British explorer. Built in 1901 atop Cape Byron headland over in the northeast of New South Wales, this lighthouse is Australia's most easterly tower. Because it sits about 100 metres above sea level, the tower itself didn't need to be tall, so it was built to stand just 72 feet high. With a range of 27 nautical miles, it is Australia's most powerful lighthouse. It finally became fully automated in 1989 and is still active to this day. This area also contains the Cape Byron Information Centre, a maritime museum, a walking track, a cafe, picnic areas, and so much more. Guided tours of the lighthouse itself are available to the public. This lighthouse was built in 1881 and sits at Barrenjoy Head at Palm Beach in Sydney. Made of sandstone from within the area, it remains unpainted to retain its natural appearance. It stands nearly 98 feet tall and was fully automated in 1972. George Mulhall was the first keeper here, and his grave is located here on the headland. It's been said he was struck by lightning here and then later died in 1885 after an illness. In September 2013, there was a massive bushfire here on the headland, but luckily the lighthouse was spared any damage. The Hornby Lighthouse is situated on the tip of South Head in New South Wales. It was constructed in 1858 after two terrible shipwrecks occurred here in 1857. It became the third lighthouse built in this area and stands just 30 feet tall with very distinct vertical red and white stripes. The range here is 14 nautical miles and automation took place for this tower in 1933. Hornby Lighthouse also goes by the names of South Head Lower Light and South Head Signal Station and is an excellent place for whale watching during the winter. Built in 1879, Tacking Point is Australia's 13th oldest lighthouse. A short little lighthouse such as 26 feet tall, it was built of cement rendered bricks and became automated in 1920. The original keeper's dwelling stood adjacent to the lighthouse, but today only the foundations remain. One of the past keepers here had a tragic accident in 1910 when his horse-drawn buggy had collided with a fence while going down a steep incline, throwing him out of it, and subsequently he died shortly after. The tower itself is not open to the public, however, coming here just for the views alone is very much worth it. The oldest surviving lighthouse on mainland Australia, Cape Otway is also known as the Beacon of Hope. First lit in 1848, this tower was extremely isolated, with supplies being delivered only every 6 to 12 months. It was finally decommissioned in 1994. Today, guests can book a stay at the former lightkeeper's cottage here, which can sleep up to 8 guests. From June to September, humpback and southern right whales make their way past this lighthouse, providing incredible views of their journey from this site. The original tower at this site was built in 1913 and was a steel tower with no keeper assigned. The current concrete structure you see here today was built in 1951 and stands just 32 feet tall with a range of 18 nautical miles. The original lantern from the first tower was reused here for this second tower. In 2006, the original lens was removed and is now on display at the Port Albert Maritime Museum, which is about an hour away from this station. Cape Shank Lighthouse was built in 1859 and was constructed of limestone, which was then painted white. Standing 69 feet tall with a range of 26 nautical miles, this tower contains a unique stone stairway unlike the wrought iron kind in most other lighthouses. It still uses all of its original mechanisms to function, such as the original clockwork mechanism. This tower underwent renovations from the 1970s to the early 1980s, and today there is a museum at the old assistant lightkeeper's quarters. Tours into the tower are also available.
One of the more unusual lighthouses of Australia is the Mercy Bluff Lighthouse. This one is unique in that it has vertical red and white striping, as this was not an overly common day mark used at the time it was built in 1889. It stands 52 feet tall and has a range of 14 nautical miles. Unfortunately, there are a few tributes around the grounds to people that have lost their lives here while trying to save others from drowning. The grounds here are open to the public to explore, so of course, please use serious caution in this area, and only authorized personnel are permitted inside the tower. Kate Bruni is the third oldest Commonwealth light station in Australia. It was built in 1838 with a height of 43 feet and a range of 26 nautical miles. In 1903, the original staircase was replaced with a cast iron staircase, which is still there to this day. This tower had been continuously manned for 158 years, from 1838 until it was finally deactivated in 1996. In December of 2000, the lighthouse and station area became part of the South Bruni National Park. Cape Bruni Lighthouse is the only southern Tasmanian tower that is open for tours. This lighthouse is very special in that it was the very first one built in Queensland. First lit in 1857, it stands 75 feet tall and was constructed using prison labour. The sandstone tower had its two bright red bands painted on it in 1942. Originally, the tower used an oil wick and transitioned several times over the years to finally becoming solar powered in 1997. It became fully automated in 1998. The former lighthouse keeper's residence is now the Cape Morton Information Centre and the grounds are open to the public but the tower itself is closed. Grassy Hill Lighthouse was built in England and shipped over to Queensland in 1885. Located in Cooktown, it was first lit in 1886, stands just a short 20 feet tall, has a base of about 10 feet wide, and a range of 9 nautical miles. In 1927, the light became automated and the station was demanned. This area is of historical significance in that Captain Cook once stood here, overlooking the sea as he planned on how to navigate through the waters here. Located on Kangaroo Island, the Cape Borda Lighthouse was built in 1858 and is the only square stone lighthouse in this area. Standing just 33 feet tall, this light has a range of 21 nautical miles. There is a small cannon next to the lighthouse that was originally used during foggy days to warn ships of danger, but was also used to indicate a small military presence to help ward off enemy ships. It was restored in 1999 and is still fired daily at 1pm. A few kilometers away from the lighthouse, you'll find Harvey's Return Graveyard, where 16 people that lived at the lighthouse complex over the years have been buried. The first head keeper, Captain G.W. Woodward, was laid to rest here in 1858. The original tower here was built in 1871 and was automated in 1927. The current modern tower you see here was its replacement in 1972, which stands next to the foundations of the original tower. Cape Jervis Lighthouse guides ships through the Baxter's Passage between Kangaroo Island and the mainland. Its twin is the Robe Lighthouse, also built in 1972, which is located in Robe about four and a half hours away. This lighthouse is located in West End and has been here since 1878. It was made of prefabricated steel segments, which were transported here from England and then assembled on site. This gave it the distinction of being the first steel tower on the mainland of Australia. Point Moore was converted to electricity in 1958, and the red and white Daymark stripes were added in 1969. Standing 111 feet tall, Point Moore Lighthouse has been discovered to be a beautiful sound chamber when some local musicians gathered inside this steel tower recently to experiment with the sound of instruments in here. This lighthouse is located on Rottnest Island and has stood here since 1900. Made of limestone, this tower stands 63 feet tall with a range of 14 nautical miles. It was constructed because of a terrible cargo ship accident that occurred here a year prior where 12 people lost their lives. Today it's a popular spot with visitors not only because of the beauty of the lighthouse but the gorgeous views of Pinky Beach down below. 
If you'd like to see more content on lighthouses, please do follow Lighthouse Buffs on Instagram. And for content on beaches around the world, please check out my other YouTube channel, All Things Ocean. That is it for this one today, you guys. If you enjoyed the video, of course, please do give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already and if you want to see more content similar to this. And I will see you next time. Take care.